My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love, love you, Glamma. Oh, I love you too, Glamma girls. <laughs> Hi everyone, Leticia here again with Made with Love by Glamma, where everything here is made and taught with love by me, Glamma. Today we're going to be learning how to crochet this boot cuff. Um, it looks really cool because you wear this on, on your boots, in your boots, and all you see is the ruffly part. So we're going to be making Glamma's um, ruffly boot cuffs. And what you see here are the tutor is the tutorial that I made yesterday, Glamma's ruffly wrist warmer slash boot cuffs. Let me show you a picture of what um, it's going to look like when I'm done. Um, if you didn't see yesterday's um, tutorial... Okay, this is my Etsy shop, and I'm making these for a client or a customer who ordered these. Um, and this is the picture that she saw when she ordered them. So yesterday I made the boot, the wrist cuffs, and today I'm making the boot cuffs. And this is the color that she ordered it in. She ordered it in brown, so this is a chocolate brown. Um, and I'm using Karen Simply Soft yarn. So... Um, I'm making these. Um, I made the first wrist warmer and I thought, hey, wait a minute, everyone's been asking me for a tutorial on these, so when I make the second one, I'll film it. Same thing with this. Last night I made this and I thought, well, the second one, I'll film it so that they have the, they have the whole set. They have the tutorial on this and the tutorial on the boot cuff. So what you'll be needing is your yarn. Hopefully you're going to be using Karen Simply Soft too because it really is soft. I love it. And for the boot cuff, I'm using, let me see if I can find the hook size right there. I'm using an eye hook. So you can use whatever size you want, but to get the look that I've got there, I'm using an eye hook. You'll need a, a tapestry needle and you'll need scissors and um, that's about it. Oh, and a stitch marker, either yarn or a stitch marker. Um, I have actual stitch markers, so um, get yourself some of those or get yourself a color in a uh, color of yarn that's contrasting to what color um, project you're making. Alrighty, so meet me back here when you have all your supplies. Okay, so I'm sure you have your supplies now and we're going to start off on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see this really nice design here. I used front post, um, front post double crochet on this. And I'm going to show you how to do that if you've never done that before. So go ahead and make your slip knot. I have to apologize for any other um, videos that a viewer of mine let me know that in the background the it sometimes moves and I realized that when I zoom in like this the background moves you see and that's distracting and I would get seasick and I apologize to everyone so I'm gonna have to kind of keep it see how it doesn't move now I'm gonna have to keep it zoomed out which kind of isn't cool let me see if it well I guess I can bring my hands forward if you really need to see a stitch, but I won't zoom in. I won't zoom the camera in anymore. So anyway, you've got your slip knot, and I know this is a really dark color for y'all to see to make a tutorial with, but um, this is the color she ordered, and if I didn't make the tutorial now with this color, I don't know when I would have ever gotten around to it. So okay, so you've got your slip knot, and for this size, um, I would say. Let me see. I don't know what. I don't know what how many inches this is. I've measured this part of my finger before, believe it or not, and this is exactly an inch. So I'm going to see how many inches across this is. One, two, three, four. This is about five inches this way. So all together, it's about 10 inches. Um, so this one, this particular tutorial pattern is for 10 inches around the calf area. Um, all right, so I kind of fit it. I fit it on my calf, but with jeans on. So I made it a little loose for my actual um, calf around my skin. So with jeans, I measured it, and it's perfect with my jeans on. So, all righty, let's make 40 um, chain stitches, and then meet me back here. Or if you're smaller than I am, or a little bit bigger than I am, then make however many chains fit around your um, jeans 
If you're going to wear them with leggings only, then you can just um, measure it against your actual skin, against your actual calf. But if you're going to wear them with um, jeans sometimes, then you might want to have your jeans on when you measure around um, your calf area. So go ahead and make however many chains you need. I'm going to make 40 and I'll meet you back here. Okay, I've got my 40 chain stitches. And I know earlier you heard my little um, Yorkie bark, and so I apologize, but hey, these are the noises of life. <laughs> I can't put music on in the background for copyright reasons, so um, you're going to hear the noises in my household. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have three dogs, a Chihuahua and two Yorkies, and every once in a while you'll, you'll hear like a squeaking sound, and that's my cockatiel bird Cosmo. So okay, now that you have your chain, make sure not to twist your chain, but we're going to go and join it with the very first chain, and we're going to join it with a slip stitch. If I can find the right string, right yarn, okay. So just make a slip stitch through there. Okay, and now you're going to chain up three for a double crochet, two, three, and what I'm going to do is um, incorporate my tail into my stitches so that I don't have to weave it in later. That's what I always do, so if I don't say it in, a, in another tutorial, you know, I always try to incorporate the tail whenever I can so that I have less... Um, weaving to do with the uh, needle. Okay, so we're going to make double crochets all the way around till we get back over here, okay? And I'll just demonstrate a couple of them just in case you're new to crocheting. Hold on a second. Okay, I don't want to get it twisted, so... Okay, wrap your yarn around. Whoops, I'm not even in the shot. And then go in through the first stitch. Wait, hold on having a hard time seeing through the camera. There it is. There's my first stitch. Go in there, come through, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Wrap around and do the same with each stitch, the top of each V there. See the V going this way? You want to do the top loop all the way around in double crochets and meet me back here. Okay, so now that you've done your double crochets all the way around, your 40 double crochets all the way around, make sure you do still have 40 um, double crochets that you started your chains with. Remember, we made 40 chains. So what we're going to do now to join this is count up three chains, and we're going to slip stitch into... Whoops, I shouldn't have yarned over, though. I was so used to doing the double crochets. Okay, so now, let me see. One, two... Make sure I'm going in the right one. Yep. Okay. And we're going to slip stitch that together. Okay. And I have to excuse myself. I just noticed when I was watching the other um, little segments that my hands are shaking because I stopped drinking coffee about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, and I just had a cup this morning and I noticed my hands are shaking a lot. I promise I'm not a glam on crack. Who's shaking? <laughs> it's just a caffeine shake. Oh boy. See, I don't have a filter. I say I say what comes to mind. <laughs> okay, so we chained up three and now we're gonna get ready for front post double crochet stitch that I'm gonna show you. So that double crochet um, that where the chain is coming out of, we're not gonna do anything with that. Now what we're going to do, you see the spaces between the double crochets from the previous row that we just finished? Well, we're going to go into that space right there, and we're going to yarn over, and we're going to go right into that space, and then come out the back, and we're lifting it up, bringing it to the front, hence the name front post, and that's what it should look like in the back. So we're lifting it up, now we're going to yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, Pull it through two loops, yarn over, and pull it through two. And there's your front post. And now we're going to do a regular double crochet on top of that next double crochet. Um, right there, we're going to go right to the top of it into that stitch with just a regular double crochet. And 
and now go to the front post again. So make sure um, that you don't accidentally go back into that one and do a front post. So kind of straighten it up like this. There's your regular, there's your front post. Because if you if you were to just keep going like this and it's kind of sideways and you just, that would be easy an easy mistake to just go into that one, but it's not. That's your regular one. So go into the next one and go behind it, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, go through the two, yarn over, go through the two. And there you go. So what we what the regular double crochet ends up looking like, it ends up looking like a back post, even though we didn't do the back post stitch, but it looks like it because we raised up every other stitch. So go ahead and keep doing that all the way around. Now we're ready for the regular double crochet. Do this all the way around. Follow this sequence till you get to the other side and I will meet you back here. If I went too fast on this, then just rewind and rewatch it. <laughs> okay, meet you back when I'm over here at this end. Okay, so I'm almost at the end and this is what it should be looking like all the way around. Front post regular, front post regular, and my last stitch that I did was a front post. So now I'm going to do a regular double crochet right there. And now if you did this correctly, your very last stitch right there should be a front post um, double crochet stitch. We started the row with a regular double crochet stitch right there and you should be ending with a front post and that's really awesome because it makes it look like there is no beginning or end. See, it's continuous. So um, our last one was a front post. Our very first one was a back, um, not back post, but a regular, which makes it look like a back post. So it's looking continuous. Front post, back post, front post, back post, front post, back post. And it looks like we didn't even have a beginning or an end. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, okay, so now we're going to join this stitch. One, two, three. Join with the slip stitch. Wait, but I like to go through both things. I don't like to just grab it from there because it's a little weaker. One, two, I can't see through the camera. Okay, there we go. Now make your little slip stitch and chain up three. One, two, and three. And now we're going to do the exact same thing. See? That's the first stitch of the previous row that we did. And so we're not going to do anything with that again. Now it's going to be easy to determine which one to do the front posts on because they're pushed to the front. So earlier you had to be really careful to not um, grab the front post or the back post. So it's because um, I had to frog it a couple times. <laughs> I told y'all to be careful and I actually caught myself make a little mistake. I, uh, I did a regular right here. And then I ended up grabbing it and doing a front post. So I'm not on that particular one, but somewhere over here. So I had to frog it and redo it. So now um, it's going to be super easy to know which ones to use the front post for because they're popped up. So go ahead and yarn over. And the one that's already popped up, go behind it. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over, go through the two. Yarn over, go through the last two. And let's do it again. Now that's pushed to the back, so that's our regular double crochet. So just do your regular in that one. Man, my voice is even shaky because of the coffee. My word. No more coffee for me. Okay, look at that. My thumb is shaking. Okay, so go ahead and do that all the way around. And then um, meet me back here. What we're going to do when we get back here is we're going to join it with a slip stitch. And hopefully you end with... Um, the front post again. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm sure y'all are finished with the second row of the uh, front post stitches, and I forgot to tell y'all to uh, not forget to uh, click your row counter. So that was row three. Now we're going to be starting row four, and row four is going to be what we're going to use all the way up until I believe, yes. Yeah, six or seven rows. I'm not sure. I'll check here in a minute. So go up three chains and connect with a um, slip stitch as always. 
And this time, um, this is where we're going. Uh oh, the background's moving again. Sorry, guys. Let me keep it back here. But I don't know if y'all can see, though. Darn it. I don't know why it does that. Anyway, what we're going to do here is um, a slip stitch because like you've probably heard in my past tutorials, I like to work in a spiral when working in the round because I don't like to see seams in case they start to go crooked. I don't like to see them. So right there at that first slip stitch that you made, put your marker because then we'll know where we started each time. And when we get to the next row, we're going to move it from there up to the next one and so on. Okay, and that's also an indication of when you'll know when to click your row counter. Okay, so we that's a slip stitch. And now for the next one, we're going to make a... If I got louder, I'm sorry. I'm having to lean down into the camera so I can see what I was doing. Okay, so now we're going to unwrap that. And hold on, where did I just go into? Yeah. Okay, yeah, right here. We're going to make a single crochet. And now a regular half double crochet. And I call it regular because you go through all three like most people know how to do. And I don't know what to call this stitch. If you watch my um, Glamour's Roughly Wrist um, Cuff tutorial, I don't know what to call it. It's not a half double crochet. It's not a double crochet. So I don't know what to call it. I'm sure there's a name for it. If y'all know it, tell me. But I'm calling it a Glamour's half double crochet just because I don't know what to call it. But um, on my notes, I'm writing GHDC just because I have to be able to determine which kind of um, um, stitch to make. So anyway, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and now we're going to yarn over and do Glamour's half double crochet or whatever it's called. And we're going to, oh, oh you know what? Uh, I wanted to only go through the, no, actually I did right, darn it. I thought I was going to only go through the front loops, but that's on the next row. We're going to do that. Okay, so there's my slip stitch. No. Yeah, I'm going to start it all over now. Okay, that's my slip stitch where the marker is. And now I'm going to do the single crochet stitch. And now I'm going to do the half double crochet stitch. Because I like I like to make it gradual. See how it's going to be a gradual. When I get back around and keep going around, it's going to be a gradual little... Um, incline rather than just an abrupt one so okay there's my regular one and here's glamour's half double crochet go through both parts of the v see and then come out and the reason i go all the way this way is because i want the stitch to be as big as possible and we're going to go through the second loop ah. go through the second loop as well if i can see let me do that again because i missed a, i missed a thread Okay, yarn over, go through, pull it through there as well as through that loop right there. Now yarn over and go through the last two. So in a half double crochet, as you witnessed earlier, you went through all three. And then in a double crochet, you yarn over, go through, pull it through, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through the last two. Well here you saw that I only yarned over at the beginning and then pulled it through that loop and then I yarned over and pulled it through there so it's not as short as the half double crochet but it's not as tall as a double crochet so it's I don't know what it is but it's in my book it's Glamour's half double crochet <laughs> so we're gonna do this using both parts of the V both loops um, whoops don't yarn over because that would be a double and then go through the sec. It's a little bit more of a pain in the butt to do, but I like the look. And if you want to get this look, that's what I did. Um, so if you don't want that look and you don't want to go through the hassle of doing that, then you can either use a half double crochet or a double crochet. So you'll probably not use the same amount of rows as I do then because your stitch will either be smaller or bigger. But anyway, do this all the way around and stop when you get to the marker and then I'll show you what to do. Okay, so I'm almost at the end here, and I think I have one more stitch to do. Boy, I swear I have a hard time seeing over the camera. 
but it is what it is. Who says that? Oops, I don't want to do that. Um, what's her name? April on uh, Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> God, that show is so silly. Okay, um, so there we are at the stitch marker. And now what we're going to do is continue those, what I call, glamour half double crochets. But we're only going to go into the front loop. Okay, so, wah, hit the camera. Yarn over. And go through the front loop only. Hey, if I can see. Come on, get in there, baby. It's tight because it's a slip stitch, so it's kind of tight to get in there. So do your um, glamour half double crochet on that. And now move that stitch. I like to move the stitch marker afterwards so that I don't forget um, which stitch to put it into. Okay, so now move it up to there. Uh-oh, just a minute. Move it up to there, and at that point is when I use my row counter and click it. And so now we're on row five. Um, and now we're going to continue doing Glamour's half double crochets in the front loops only. Okay. Um, okay. There we go. And I did this for this right here. Let me see how many rows I did it for. I did it for rows five through eight. So we're on five now. So I did it till I got to row eight. Um, and this, let me, I showed you inches going this way. It's so cool that this measures an inch. <laughs> I've always thought it was cool. I kind of, um, I don't know, I've always been kind of goofy, kind of silly, where I just little, um, what do you call it? Eh. Just little facts, like I forget what you call it, but there's a word for it. Just little facts like that have always intrigued me. So just the fact that that's one inch is awesome to me. So one, two, three, whoops, three, four. I did it for about four inches. This whole thing measures four, five, like five and a half inches. So if you want yours longer, like if you want yours to go way down to your ankle, then you would do this way down there and you would probably make this a little a little tighter because our ankles are, are skinny. Skin. Ah. <clears throat> I just got a tickle in my throat. Oh my goodness, live TV although we're not on TV. Okay, so anyway, however long you want it, but I'm doing mine until I get to row eight, and then I will meet you back here. Um, so you saw how, let me move that so you can see it. Okay, so you saw how I, I kind of went, I just kept going, we're gonna be working in a spiral, and you're not even gonna see a seam at all. So when you get to that, just stitch into it, do your thing, and then move the marker up, and then click your row counter. Awesome. I'll see you back at row eight when we're done with row eight. Okay, so I forgot to mention that we're going to continue with that until we get to row 11, okay? And then I'll show you what to do after that. Then we're going to start doing the part that flares this way. So keep doing this until row 11, and I'll meet you at the end of row 11. Okay, so I just finished my 11th row, and I already stitched into the... Uh, oh, actually, I haven't stitched into that one. Um, yeah, I did. I stitched into the stitch marker stitch. So now I'm going to move up the stitch marker, which is actually the first stitch of row 12, if I can find it. There you go. All right, so that's the first stitch of row 12. And what um, you're going to do is you're going, so that's stitch one. What you're going to do is do three stitches so one two three and then you're going to put two stitches in that one which is your increase stitch and then you're going to start over again one two three and then in the fourth one you're going to do two stitches your increase stitch so you're going to do all of that on row 12 and then when you get to row 13 um Right here is the end of row 12. When you get to row 13, this will be your first stitch. Move your marker up, so crochet into it, move your marker up. And then on row 13, you're going to um, do four regular stitches. So one, two, three, four. And then in the fifth one, you're gonna do your increase stitch, which means put two stitches in one and then one, two, three, four, and then your increase stitch. So, and then when you're done with that row, 
in row 14, you're going to do um, five regular ones and then into the sixth one you're going to do your increase stitch okay so i will meet you back here at the end of that row all righty okay so i'm almost at the end of the 14th row and i figured i would do the rest with you so here's my increase and then one two three four five and i'm ready for an increase again hard to see. The lighting, as you can tell, has changed because I had to do some stuff in between and so now it's nighttime and I had to turn the light on. Let me see. Increase. One, two, three, four, five. Increase. <clears throat> for another increase. One. And in that same stitch, another one for my increase. The increase is, is what's, as you can tell, is what gave it the flare um, right here. So, if I can get it out of there. So on row 12 is where the flare started, so that's 14, 13, 12. So right around 12 is where we did the increase rows, and that's the nice little flare that we have. And now I'm going to <clears throat> stop here with the uh, Glamo half double crochets, and I think I'm going to do, actually I think I'll do one more. Okay, and now I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to start the decline, <clears throat> excuse me, have a tickle in my throat. I'm going to start the decline, so I'm going to do a regular half double crochet, which means we go through all three. Wait, I did that wrong, didn't I? I forgot to yarn over. Okay, go in, yarn over, and go through all three. And now we're going to do a, what am I doing, single crochet. And now, yeah, can't get through all the threads. Right there at the stitch marker, I'm going to make a slip stitch. And now I'm going to show you what to do. Okay, at this point, now we're going to do the ruffly part. You know, the part that makes it look like a little ruffle. And to do that, all you do is chain up three, one, two, three and then in the very next stitch grab both parts of the loop or both parts of the V so grab both loops and just make a single crochet and then chain up three one two three and then right into the next stitch make a single crochet and that's it just keep repeating that all the way around till you get right there you'll be able to recognize when you get to the end because you'll see that little that little ruffle part right there so just go ahead and do it all the way to there and you'll be done and i think i'll just sign off here because there's really nothing else to show you um so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial of glamour's roughly boot cuff um and if you haven't seen the um, Glamaw's Roughly Wrist Cuff slash Wrist Warmer, then um, go ahead and look for it on my channel and you'll have the matching set. Alrighty guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can get notified of other fun tutorials that I'll be um, 
uploading soon and don't forget to give my video a thumbs up if you liked it if you didn't like it you don't have to bother giving me a thumbs down eh. <laughs> why why put negativity out there right <laughs> I really appreciate you stopping by Made With Love by Glamour, where everything here is made and taught with love by me, Glamour. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you for watching, watching our Glamour's channel. channel.